So welcome everybody to this new webinar uh, by Verify in, uh, in the, the Bitcoin Montreal Meetup Group. So uh, today we're going to talk about confidentiality and privacy within the Bitcoin ecosystem. So just to remember, uh, just as a reminder, uh, this is one presentation in, uh, in uh, one out of four for the security, uh, security month we have been organizing the past few weeks. So I'm going to talk about it a bit more later in the end. So there's a few other presentations like that that was I was giving about choosing your right Bitcoin wallet, about running your own node, about having um, a cold storage solution. So all these uh, are uh, possible to watch on the Bitcoin YouTube Montreal channel. After after the presentation, I'll be giving all the links uh, in the chat. So my name is uh, Maciej. For uh, those who don't know me, I work at Verify. We're a Bitcoin uh, consultancy group uh, based in Montreal, working in the Bitcoin uh, uh, in the Bitcoin world. We offer uh, consultancy services, but also security services for those who have a lot of Bitcoins and want to protect them, respecting the Bitcoin ethos such as privacy, sovereignty, and security. So we do it. We do it all, and we also launching a platform. Uh, uh, an exchange in the upcoming days uh, in on which Canadians are going to be able to buy Bitcoin through a non-custodial way. And uh, so we're really excited about that. If you're interested of being a better user of the platform, if and you want to contact me um, for that, it will be really nice. So welcome everybody again and thank you for attending. So as a disclaimer, quick disclaimer before I do the presentation. So there's no legal or tax advice in that presentation. So if you're looking uh, a way for a way to hide your Bitcoins from uh, taxing authorities, this is not the right presentation. Um, and also uh, pri privacy is never perfect. So you should be aware of the risk of the tools that are going to be presented today. It's really hard to be completely disappear from the map. And uh, it's, there's always some leaks somewhere. And um, all the tools that I present uh, that will be presenting today are legal to use in Canada and in the vast majority of countries. So don't worry, uh, everything is legal here. And of course, uh, verify as a company. Don't recommend any illegal activities that you could do with your bitcoins. So what are we gonna talk about today? So we're gonna talk uh, first of all why privacy, why privacy is important, especially within the Bitcoin world. Uh, what are the challenges of Bitcoin privacy? How to achieve it? Uh, and uh, we're gonna talk about a really specific tool today that is really popular uh, in the Bitcoin ecosystem, which is the Wasabi Wallet. Uh, I'm going to talk more about it later and have a demo uh, showing you how it works. Uh, we're going to talk uh, about VPNs, uh, Tor, the Tor network, and why you should never use a light wallet to store your Bitcoin, especially if you care about your privacy. So why privacy? This is a really important question because people often dismiss, especially today, when everything is trying uh, to tracker information every everybody's storing an information for future use or analysis uh, it's kind of hard to perceive why our privacy or why privacy in general should be important in our lives um, in my opinion privacy is a fundamental human right and should be respected by everybody um, as as you as you saw for example in the past year uh, there were some protests in hong kong um, in regards of the insurrection of uh, China uh, into their political system. And there was a lot of protests and still going on process. And there was a lot of tracking from the authorities on the protesters. And uh, the, the, the protesters were really ingenious and started to find new ways in order to obfuscate the way uh, a gov the govern Chinese government could, could spy on them. So, for example, they were using lasers and pointing them at cameras in order to uh, to uh, um, to uh, not make the camera uh, the facial uh, facial recognition the camera work. Uh, they were using uh, single use passes for the bus and metro in order to not get uh, associated with the fact they were going to protest. So and they were wearing masks in order to to hide their faces. And you you can see in that really specific case that privacy at that moment was really important. Uh, but they were already fighting for it while they were losing. And so how can we uh, use tools and uh, in our everyday life and have that perception of privacy uh, before we have to fight for it? 
another reason for uh, privacy, especially in terms of uh, the, the if you have some Bitcoins, the less people, the less information there are on your Bitcoin activities or uh, your Bitcoin holdings, the less uh, the surfaces of attacks or threats you have uh, from people trying that may try to steal uh, st steal them from you. So if people don't know that you have Bitcoin, and the bitcoins well it's kind of hard to steal it from it and it makes the the cost of the attack a much more um, much more uh, big because uh, it's really hard to attack somebody without knowing exactly how many bitcoin he has how he stores them and etc uh, etc et so it's really important in regards of security for bitcoin uh, for if you have some bitcoins to keep them private and uh, you also may know that a lot of information uh, that are that are uh, sp spying companies doing on the blockchain uh, they will afterwards sell that data to somebody else and you don't get any share of that revenue and uh, it's ki it kind of sucks to to uh, to be used as a product and not have any benefits from it and also in regards of the information once it's on the internet you can consider it, consider it as permanent and it's really hard afterwards to erase it or find every little bits of it that that was spread it through the the, the the internet network so once there is some information out there it's really hard to retrieve it and and protect it and if you're a business if you're a, a company uh, using bitcoin um, it's really also important uh, privacy is really important in regards of competitiveness because you don't want your you don't want your competitors to you look looking at your addresses at your transaction and and uh, forecasting what what is your revenue what is your your profit margins and that could hurt your business in the long run if uh, some people can can really read what is happening and basically if you're not private within the bitcoin network it's really as if you're really showing your financial uh, record and uh, uh, to other companies. So it can be pretty dangerous. And th that's one of the reasons uh, a lot of businesses don't use Bitcoin is because it's not private enough yet. So um, for all these reasons are uh, all these reasons are uh, reasons why privacy is important. And I have a little quote here that I like because a lot of people are going to say, well, I, I don't really care about privacy because I, I don't really have uh, anything to hide. I'm not a criminal. I'm not I'm not doing any illegal activity. Uh, but I have a really nice quote that 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 really sums up that that way of thinking, in my opinion. It's like anyone who does not care about the right to privacy because they have nothing to hide is the equivalent of someone who does not care about the right to free speech because they have nothing to say. So for me, it's it's really about that. It's not about hiding something. It's ha having the optionality of giving out your information when only you decide uh, that you should give it. But uh, Bitcoin is, is really hard to make private, at least at the beginning it was. Uh, so there are a few challenges to, to go, go over it be before you can really become anonymous within the Bitcoin network. And one of them is basically that address uh, were presented in the beginning, mostly uh, through, for example, one-on-one -on -one Bitcoin uh, videos that were anonymous. But the addresses are not anonymous. They're, they're more pseudonymized because once you have a set of address or a public key that can be associated with your identity, it becomes like a pseudonym. Even if there's no name attached to it or there's no addresses or any other information, if someone identifies you with this, uh, with uh, uh, your identity and associate with an address, well, after that, it, it becomes more like a pseudonym. So you, the challenge is, first of all, is to make that step of associating your private, uh, your uh, identity to an address really hard in order to not be, uh, 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 sorry, in order to not be uh, affected by that. Uh, one of the other big reasons why Bitcoin privacy can be hard is because in most of the countries, especially, for example, here in the US, in the Europe, there are strict laws regarding uh, KYC, which is an acronym for Know Your Customer, and also IAN. Uh, AML laws for any uh, anti money laundering. So if you want to buy Bitcoin with fiat, uh, which which are which is uh, our money, 
basically, you're going to often have to identify yourself to the exchange because they are ob obliged by the law uh, to do so. Is it necessarily a bad thing? Uh, not necessarily depends how that platform specifically that collects your uh, the, your information treats your information afterwards. So if they have good ways to store it and only share it with uh, a governmental or uh, authorities uh, in, uh, in only if certain conditions are respected, it's not that bad. There is so there is the the the, the fiat and Bitcoin conversion. Um, but there's also the the network so the networks because the bitcoin network works in parallel with other uh, systems such as the ip address uh, uh, network as i as all our computers are working like that once for example your ip address is associated with a, bit, a bitcoin activity or a specific set of addresses it can be really hard after that to detach yourself uh, uh, from that IP address and being being recognized as someone who trades Bitcoin. So there is the the challenge of fiat and Bitcoin KYC. There is the the challenge of uh, the the other networks that your Bitcoin uses to 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 spread the information. But there's also the the information itself in the blockchain. So as you know, all Bitcoin transactions are recorded in the the ledger, the blockchain, and you can really analyze by seeing the historics of transaction through the, the different addresses that something so somebody may uh, have some funds and he sends them here and sends them here. And uh, so you have that that uh, that way to analyze uh, what is happening on the Bitcoin net, uh, blockchain. Uh, and these particular ways in which transactions are built and people are going to often use the same template to use uh, to do a bitcoin transactions while blockchain analysis companies they know that most of the people uh, do transaction that way. so uh, they're going to use that information and assume that if for example you have sorry i'm just going to So if they have that information, it's called a heuristics. So heuristics it just means that a set of assumptions in regards of how people are using Bitcoin permits them to um, to infer what may what may what may is happening with uh, with your stuff. So these are all the challenges of Bitcoin privacy. Um, and why why is it important? Because uh, for those who who are more uh, into the Bitcoin rabbit hole, you may know that uh, Bitcoin wasn't the first attempt to create a digital currency that is not controlled by any government, by any central bank. And uh, this comes from the, the cypherpunks. So cypherpunks was really a group of rebel uh, activists working for privacy and uh, open uh, societies on the internet that could live on the internet. And one of the main points uh, uh, of uh, of their activism was privacy that basically you don't have uh, the obligation to to uh, uh, to identify yourself if you want to uh, do business if you want to ex uh, express yourself about a certain opinion so so bitcoin comes from that set of uh, of uh, of ideology so uh, uh, if you want to read more about this uh, there is a the cypherpunk manifesto uh, that I put the link here below. And uh, as, as I told before, uh, all the presentations are on the Bitcoin YouTube Montreal channel. So you're going to be able to view the slides. It's a really nice little read. It's not that long, but uh, it gives like a really nice perspective on what these people were thinking at the time. And I have a, a little uh, quote again here. So privacy is necessary for an open society in the electronic age. Privacy is not secrecy. A private matter is something one doesn't want the whole world to know, but a secret matter is something one doesn't want anybody to know. Privacy is the power to selectively reveal oneself to the world. So as I said, you don't necessarily have something to hide, but you have you want have to have that optionality of only telling that information to the to the rest of the people when only you decide. So it's a really question of choice. So uh uh back like le then we we jump on really the technical parts so uh i will be presenting a, a really simple tool that was developed 
for uh, the past years in Bitcoin, uh, which is a Wasabi wallet. And basically what it is, it's the first uh, uh, wallet that permits to do coin join uh, without a, a, a central uh, coordinator. So what, what was happening with people before when they wanted to... Um, uh, to uh, mix some bitcoins to become private, uh, which is one of the methods that you could use to basically switch the UTXOs from one address to another. Uh, and the, there is a need for a coordinator to make that happen because a lot of people are going to ask, okay, well, um, uh, I, I see some questions in uh, the chat. We're going to go over them at, at the end. But... Uh, um, uh, but uh, but uh, uh, we're gonna discuss it at, at the end. Sorry, and uh, so basically before that, the on the black market you could uh, mix your coins with other people uh, by uh, by with a central coordinator. But what was happening in the end a lot of times it's basically uh, finishing up in uh, exit scams and people that were coordinating because they were on the black uh, on the on the black. Uh, on the dark web, uh, it was really hard to retrieve them and there was a lot of stuff happening. And Wasabi Wallet was one of the first that used the coin join technology, which is uh, the, the, the the act of mixing uh, different uh, outputs with uh, other outputs with, with, your, with your own. So the link between your uh, transaction history is broken. And that was the first one that did it in a decentralized way, and basically they can't steal the bitcoins one once you 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 put the 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 your bitcoin to be mixed on the Wasabi wallet. So the the desktop uh, is a the wallet itself is a desktop wallet available for our platform. It's a completely open source, including the backend, so you could. Uh, verify by yourself and build it from source uh, if you're scared to download uh, the wrong version. It's built in C-sharp and uh, has the .NET framework. And what is really good about it, it's basically wrapped it with Tor, and we're going to talk about Tor more later. So it makes it much more private in, in the beginning. And it uses a Neutrino-style wallet. A Neutrino-style wallet uh, is a form of a SPV wallet, and a SPV wallet is a, is an acronym for Simple Payment Verification. It's uh, it's uh, an alternative way, uh, in uh, uh, of like what uh, how a wallet connects to the Bitcoin network. So normally, most of the companies, um, most of the the wallets offering. Uh, uh, most of the companies offering a wallet service, you're going to be connecting yourself to only one singular. Uh, one singular server, and you're going to be sharing your uh, XPUB, your public key, and they can know all your addresses and your your uh, transaction that you're going to do afterwards with that. And SPV it tries to mitigate the fact that you're sharing all your information to a singular server, but asking the needed information for your own transaction in the Bitcoin uh, in your Bitcoin wallet by asking multiple nodes, multiple servers. Uh, some random information, including the one that you're really seeking for, in order to mitigate the possible uh, analysis that could be done with the, the with, with these uh, requests that you're doing uh, to the Bitcoin network. So it uses the uh, uh, Neutrino style wallet, and uh, so the technology behind it is it's coin join and uh, uh, and zero link. There's few implementation of it. Uh, was that be wallet being the the more uh, popular one and uh, the best in my opinion uh, but there's also for example join market and uh, um, uh, 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 samurai wallet sorry and at the moment you can you have to input at least 0 0.1 bitcoin uh, in order to mix with other participants and uh, there's an estimation of around uh, 0 0.0 15 percent of fees uh, to do it, so so there is a cost associated with the fact that they're holding the servers, that they they do all that software, so that it's it's a service, and you're mixing with 100 other peers, uh, which means that you'll be mixing your 0 0.1 Bitcoin with uh, other 0 0.1 Bitcoin. Um, it doesn't mean that it's it's uh, it's necessarily 100 different person because someone could, for example, have 20 inputs. Uh, in that 100 percent, uh, 100 peers, and uh, so it doesn't mean, but it, it's pretty, uh, it's pretty uh, uh, 
uh, anonymous at that point. And you can also do multiple rounds in order to to even further increase the 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 possible probabilities of your your coins going somewhere and uh, receiving a coin from some somebody else. So I uh, just wanted to show you a little bit how does uh, a transaction, uh, how does a, a coin join transaction look? So we'll be going to that link. Everybody still sees. So I have identified pre before I started the the, con uh, the the presentation a coin join transaction, and you can. And you can identify them by uh, with a really simple uh, way, uh, really, uh, because you're you're mixing a certain amount of coins every time. It's gonna change a little bit. It's always a minimum of zero point one, uh, but uh, the 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 subsequent numbers after that change often. And but in the in the coin join transaction, you're going to see a lot of outputs that are going to be basically the same. And this is what is happening today. So you have all these previous inputs that have been mixing uh, within uh, the Wasabi wallet, and you have all these uh, outcoming outputs um, coming out of the transaction. And you don't know uh, which output came from which input because it was all all mixed uh, with the coordinator, and that that breaks the link. Uh, of your previous transaction. So that's how a uh, coin, coin, coin join transaction looks. And now we're going to really go into the, bit, the Wasabi wallet so I can show you a little bit how it works. So you have, uh, we have a little demo here. I'm going to jump to, pres uh, I'm going to just switch the, uh, the window that I'm presenting. So, so I already opened a Wasabi wallet. Is everybody seeing? I'm guessing that yes. So, so for those who are familiar uh, with uh, Bitcoin, uh, Bitcoin wallets, it's it's really uh, similar to other uh, Bitcoin wallets such as Electrum, uh, such as Electrum. Uh, so you have always like the send, receive tab, uh, uh, and what is different in that case uh, is the coin join uh, tab. Uh, which is not present in all the other wallets. Uh, so it's really simple. In the send tab, you can always have uh, the, the the addresses that you want to send Bitcoin, some Bitcoins to, the amount, uh, depending on how much Bitcoins you, you want to uh, send, and you have the password. So basically, like all other wallets, um, it's, it's really simple. And the same for uh, a receive, you generate a, a receive address, you can take it, send it to your friends, and receive your payments uh, that way. So, for example, today I won't be doing a mixing round. Uh, I have some bitcoins. I, I, I did some coin join before. I just wanted to show you the principle because sometimes uh, it, it can take a little while before a mixing round is initiated. So, like in uh, like in every other wallet that should have that option, is having the uh, I, somebody is presenting okay somebody is presenting uh his screen i don't know if uh, oh okay <laughs> uh so you have um, all the different coins the utxos you can select on uh we only have one today but for example if you had two utxos while well, you could choose one or another to be mixed or uh, to be combined uh, together and you'll be writing your password before you enable the coin join mixing round. And basically, you can also choose how many people you want to mix with. Uh, the choice, I think it's uh, 50 and 100 people. Uh, in the presentation, I say 100, but you, you can also do it with 50. And what basically what it's going to do, you're going to put your coins to be mixed in queue. So they're going to be waiting with other participants uh, in order to be mixed. And for example, at that moment, the minimum is actually 0 0.11. As you can see, the, it, it's also showing you how many people are already uh, registered in queue uh, to, to, uh, to be mixed. So uh, for example, there's only, uh, uh, there's 
see somebody maybe uncued his uh, uh, his uh, coin at that moment because it, it reduces. So we, it has to reach a certain threshold of participants in order to initiate um, the, the the mixing round. And it's really simple. You just click on the thing here, and uh, and uh, and uh, you initiate the round. So so it's really simple to use. It's really trusted by the community. They're really responsive to any issues. Uh, so uh, it's a really trusted tool. And as I said before, you can see on the bottom here that Tor is running. So it's actually saying uh, to you that effectively uh, the, 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 you don't see? No? Okay, somebody says that he doesn't see. Uh, maybe there's, uh, there's two windows with my name. There's a, uh, okay, oh, oh, okay, I'm sorry, okay, uh, okay, just a second, sorry about that. Sorry. Okay, that's weird. You see? Okay, so I don't know. Uh, okay, I don't know uh, where where the presentation uh, exactly finished. So I was just doing a, a quick recap um, of what I said before. So you have the, the the coin join tab here. You're gonna be able to select all your UTXOs over here. And uh, once you have input your password, you're going to be able to put your coin in queue in order to be mixed with other participants. You have to wait to a certain amount of peers to be registered to uh, queuing in line in order to, to start mixing. And once uh, it reach, uh, reaches a certain threshold, well, you're going to receive fresh anonymized Bitcoin in your wallet, uh, in your coin join wallet again. Um, so for those who have any more question about the CoinJoin wallet, you can always ask, uh, uh, send me a message and uh, it will be my pleasure uh, to do it. So back to the presentation, uh, just making sure that now you see my presentation. I think so right now. Okay, right, you see. So we did this little demo, as you saw, it, it's really not that hard. Um, it's really, it's much more e e user-friendly than anything that was done before in, in regards of mixing and coin join. So I invite everybody that want to increase their anonymity uh, within the Bitcoin blockchain uh, to do so. Uh, other, other small, um, uh, small advice and really more general advice. So if you don't necessarily want um, uh, to to reach the full level of privacy, but you want to start thinking about it, well, there's always the option of VPNs. Uh, I'm not uh, uh, really an expert on VPNs, but I wanted to talk about it because a lot of people uh, ask questions about that. Uh, so how a VPN works, it's basically you're going to route your traffic to an external server that doesn't it isn't yours uh, before it reaches the final destination. So the, the, uh, the, the person that is going to receive the, the packet of information at the end, he's only going to see uh, the, the server, uh, the hub server, uh, and not your IP, IP, own address IP. So it mitigates the possible... Uh, information that could be um, done with uh, by analyzing your packets going uh, out of your uh, computer and uh, your uh, your uh, uh, local network so th but the thing is it's you still have to trust the the person or the or the service provider the VPN uh, because they're gonna have the the information of yourself uh, of your IP address and all the information that, that is going to pass through their ser their own service. So the question is is uh, if you only pay them, for example, five dollar a month for the service they provide. If uh, someone really wants some information about your your uh, your uh, your online activity and they pay them much more, are they gonna be um, uh, uh, 
are, are they gonna protect their customers or they may uh, also jeopardize you by by selling all your information so uh, there's still some trust involved and especially if it's a free VPN service, uh, you should be aware that it's pretty suspic suspicious. Nobody does things for free. So at least if you have, uh, if you choose to use a VPN, do it with a trusted service provider. And um, and uh, it's normal to pay for that kind of service. And, uh, you know, you have a little meme here. It basically shows uh, how a VPN works. So, um, uh, in order, so for those who want to, don't have a VPN and want to explore a bit, uh, uh, all of them, I have a, I have a, I, I, I found a nice comparison of all of them uh, in regards of different uh, different criteria. So you have either the jurisdiction, um, uh, if they're activists, what what is their security, if uh, if they have a good customer support uh, what, what is their pricing what is their ethics etc so you have uh, really a lot of them here so depending on what are you looking for you can choose the the one that corresponds to your needs the most and so you have uh, this nice comparison here the link is here and we uh, we recommend uh, IVPN, which is based in Gibraltar it costs around sixty dollars per month and uh, uh, sorry, so sixty dollars per year, or also the Mulvad, uh, which costs around five dollars per month. And we also choose them because they're both payable with Bitcoin, so that's a plus because you because you don't have to pay, for example, with your credit card, and you can pay with some freshly coin joined Bitcoin. So you they don't even know uh, where that payment comes from. So uh, so that's a good way to to do it as well. Uh, for more advanced users, uh, I would say that Tor is more preferable than a VPN. And Tor is not a service. It's a completely new network. So it's like a parallel uh, system on which people communicate. And it's really a network. It's not a service. It's not a company running a Tor. It's, uh, it's a little bit like uh, Bitcoin. Everybody that may decide to run a Tor server uh, can do that and uh, and uh, work like that. So what it does basically, you once you rent, uh, enter the, the Tor cloud, the Tor network, it's going to jump, uh, the, your information is going to do a few uh, jumps before reaching the final destination. It's pretty much random how it does. And it also gets encrypted in another way. Uh, so you don't, you won't have IP addresses. You you will have uh, uh, so-called onion addresses, which are much more private and really hard to uh, infer any kind of information from that single onion addresses. And so you can connect to regular uh, internet internet domains, in regular internet uh, websites. And you're gonna win privacy because they they're not gonna know where um, where where is that information asked from where, uh, but they don't really benefit from privacy because uh, you're the only one private, and uh, so all the hidden services on, on the dark web and but also other services that may be um, that may be uh, uh, really useful for some people, especially for developers and whatever. Uh, they uh, they use Tor a lot, and then there's the, the the conspiracy. Well, not the conspiracy. It actually happens. Of course, uh, the government, some agencies are gonna you are gonna have some spook uh, servers on the Tor network. But are they the one controlling it in uh, as a whole? I don't think so. Uh, it's really hard to to really isolate a specific server or a specific. Uh, uh, specific uh, desktop or uh, information that you want to withhold by uh, by by making it completely uh, separate from the Tor network. And actually, uh, Tor was kind of encouraged, for example, by the 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 U.S. government uh, in uh, co some countries such as Iran, because the po political insurgents or spies uh, could use a way to communicate uh, with the world. Uh, by not being restricted by the the authoritarian government uh, at the place, so so yeah, of course, um, the government probably surveils a lot tour, uh, but they don't also completely dismiss it. 
So in regards of of uh, the wallets you, you you've been using, so I showed you one wallet that permits you to use uh, to use CoinJoin to uh, to mix and to break the existing links, transactional links that have been done in the past uh, with your Bitcoin activity. But once you have done that, if you use the same wallet and use uh, use the same uh, another wallet that's uh, that's not CoinJoin and you don't coin it each time, well, you're gonna just start a new history. And some people uh, may uh, infer new information about you. So how how you make sure that once you have gained that privacy, or, or if you're start, starting in the Bitcoin world, um, to not ha not having to to coin join at some point, while well, you should never use a lightweight wallet. What is a lightweight wallet? So if you remember uh, in the presentation, I've talked about the fact that there is two ways in which a wallet can connect to a Bitcoin network. There is the API method, so connecting to a one singular server. And there is the SPV, uh, SPV uh, method, which permits you to uh, uh, mitigate a little bit uh, the, the how much analysis could be done on your information by asking multiple servers about your transaction. So I'm going to really talk specifically about the API uh, aspect of it. So the API method in itself, it's not a bad thing. It's just that most people, when they use an API wallet, they are connecting themselves to the, the, the company, the, the service provider that offers the wallet for free. And why are they mostly all free wallets? Is because, not because they want to be nice with you, it's because they take that information and they sell it afterwards to analysis companies. So even, for example, Ledger, uh, Trezor and all uh, the the most of the hardware wallets you're going to be connecting your ledger which uh, to the ledger live platform right and by connecting your ledger live platform it means that your ledger uh, your hardware wallet is connected to their servers and that means that you have communicated your xpub your public key and they afterwards uh, afterwards can track all your activity uh, uh, for that example. So it, does that mean that le a Ledger Nano uh, hardware wallet is bad? No, because you can connect your Ledger uh, uh, wallet to your own interface and to your own server. And a, a server in the Bitcoin world is called a full node. And that takes uh, an another set of, of hardware and software. But if you connect your own wallet to your own node, well, you don't have to care about not being private because you only share that information to yourself. So you don't reveal to somebody else. And that 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 makes your Bitcoin activity and Bitcoin transaction much more private because you will be communicating with the Bitcoin network only through your own server. Uh, so for those who want to explore that e idea further and maybe uh, start thinking about it, uh, I have... Uh, I have a, 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 an article that, that we wrote, wrote here and I have also run a, a webinar on why you should run your own Bitcoin node, your own server, and uh, more details in regards of why, how to connect your wallet, etc. So it's really important that if you want to remain private within the Bitcoin world, that you have to be connected to your own node because... Or, or because you then you then you're just sharing your in all your information for free to somebody else server and and they can know everything about you afterwards. Uh, so for those who want to dive in into the the privacy rabbit hole, Bitcoin privacy rabbit hole, I have put some really nice resources here for those who want to uh, do some lectures about that. So um, uh, so these are all really great reads and I recommend them. So it's uh, it's done for today. Thank you for attending. So as I said before, uh, at the beginning of the, pre of the presentation, uh, we're doing this uh, webinars uh, as of uh, like a security month. So I did one on choose the right Bitcoin wallet, uh, run your own Bitcoin full node. So today we did the stay confidential with your Bitcoin. And uh, the next one uh, on the 16th of June, is going to be on cold storage. So it's going to kind of like encompensate all the previous ones and give like even extra information. And um, so, uh, yeah, thank you for attending. And I'll be taking questions now. 
and uh, for every uh, content that we have uh, uh, and also I will be sharing the YouTube link in a moment uh, so you can uh, you can subscribe and see the video uh, afterwards but all if you miss the previous ones or you're gonna miss the next one uh, don't worry it's everything is on uh, Bitcoin and Montreal so I'll be taking question now uh, questions now I think uh, there's a few so So Fox Raymond said, but Interpol can track Wasabi wallet transaction. There's a paper about it. I saw something about it uh, this week. And actually, I think it's completely the opposite in, in what I saw. They were basically saying they can track Wasabi wallet transactions. And, and it was kind of scary. Uh, so um, if you could send us the paper so we can look at it quickly, maybe. But from what I understood from that new uh, news uh, in the, the the last week it's basically completely the contrary it's that interpol can't track these transactions uh, tr transactions so uh it's basically really hard because it's a question of probabilities if you're mixing your your bitcoin with all all the uh, all these other people um well how how can you know that this utxo went to that particular address it's, it becomes really hard in terms of probabilities and especially if you if you do multiple rounds uh, it becomes even harder so uh, i'm not sure about that statement you said but if you have the paper uh and uh, uh i'll be happy to to see it and uh, and uh, because even the wasabi team can anonymize you uh, so that's that's really important as well because they could just uh, some authorities could just kick the door of Wasabi, uh, the Wasabi Wallet Corporation, and say, well, basically you're gonna give us all the information about your users and all the people that mixed, etc., cetera, etc. Cetera. Uh, but that's not possible with the current model they have. Okay, so sorry about the, the problems with sharing my screen. There's a lot of comments about that. So what is more secure, trusted VPN or Tor? Um, Tor makes you suspicious for the authorities. Um, I wouldn't say so. Uh, that that's that's a thing of uh, it's just trade offs uh, because you have to trust the VPN provider. It's either it's either that or Tor, but I think Tor is much more private in that regards. And you know, since for example, Tor is running just in the the, the Wasabi wallet coin join, a lot of people are using Tor not not for illegal activities, but just because they, they believe in the concept or there are some applications that only uh, uh, run on the Tor network. So I, I guess uh, it's a question of choice at some point, but also. Uh, a question of user experience and the interface uh, you know that the Tor browser and Tor websites are not necessarily the best looking um, so I think it's a personal choice but uh, having one or another is much more better already than using nothing so Patel said uh, once you have accepted to agree to AML and KYC, um, your privacy is pretty much relinquished. Yes and no. Uh, it's, it really depends how uh, the, serve, uh, the, 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 the company that has your information and how they do their own Bitcoin transactions um, um, are, is important. So, for example, uh, when we're gonna launch our exchanges, every uh, every bitcoins that that, that is gonna be uh, arriving in someone's wallet has passed through a coin join uh, coin join uh, uh, mixing round. So, in the in the terms of the blockchain, you have completely anonymous bitcoin uh, bitcoins, in ter but you don't necessarily have the anonymity coming from the fact that you have submit your KYC. But there is a distinction to be made in regards of your privacy on the network and having your UTXOs and all your coins completely clean or without being identified and having inputted your information, personal information on a singular server of a, of a company. Because that company then 
has some responsibilities regarding how they, they treat your information, to whom they can share it, et cetera. They have, so, well, they should have some policies in regards of how they, uh, they, uh, they, uh, they, uh, they uh, tell people if there was a leak of their information. So I don't completely agree with that statement, but it's kind of uh, sad that these laws are becoming more strict and strict, but uh, this is the reality. And, and there's also really important fact uh, the thing about KYC uh, on, um, on, uh, on exchanges is uh, KYC is really important for exchanges to identify fraud uh, because what is happening a lot uh, and what is a challenge for a lot of companies uh, in the space is that when uh, someone buys Bitcoin and he, for example, bought some uh, some illegal uh, credit car uh, credit call stolen uh, on the dark web, and so the person that that has his information uh, about his credit card cards like stolen uh, uh, from a random hacker, uh, that person can can buy some Bitcoins with that credit card and. Um, Afterwards, because the person is going to call their bank or their their, their Mastercard or Visa, uh, you know, uh, uh, representative, whatever, they're going to say, "Well, I never bought bitcoins, and uh, it, it, I got frauded, right?" So then the company gets uh, charged back, and they're going to have to pay for that for that fraud, basically. So it's really important also for companies because you know it's really it's really hard digitally to. It's really complicated to identify if someone tries to fraud you, and that's one of the reasons why even some exchanges are having a really strict KYC laws because they have to identify a suspicious activity. So th that's one of the reason uh, uh, KYC is also used. Uh, what do you think about sitting in cash on an exchange while planning movements? Is it riskier than something like keeping in a bank during a bank run, COVID, or PayPal than more in cash up? What what uh, with its lag time? Well, that's a really great question. Uh, it, I think it depends on your jurisdiction, depends on your country, depends on uh, the assurances that you have on your bit, uh, your uh, your bank funds, uh, all all the difference like uh, insurance that in some countries are guaranteed even by the federal government or by some insurance company. So I don't think there's a really a question, uh, really a, a, a easy response to that. But in my opinion, it's still much more safer, especially if you live in Canada, for example, to keep your fiat in uh in a in a in a in a bank than on an exchange that you may uh that may that may disappear or scam you or whatever so uh, especially if you want to use like a, a shady exchange that doesn't have like a reputation uh, that can basically flew if flee with your money uh but i, I understand the, the the challenges of where do you store your your cash while waiting, for example, Bitcoin to go down to buy a little bit more. Um, I think the safest, if you want to remain completely, uh, uh, well, not completely, but at least more capable of using your money is by having it uh, in a liquid form. So like having it the real cash. But then again, if you have a lot of money and you have uh, millions, it's kind of not, uh, it's not really secure to keep your, your, your all your money in, uh, in in your mattress for example so so uh, this is a really great question but uh, in in my my in my opinion the best option is to always convert as much as fiat as possible uh, into Bitcoin so that you don't have to worry about your your fiat uh, disappearing either because a bank defaulted on uh, the, their funds or because uh, an exchange flew with your money and uh, so uh, um so that's that's my opinion but uh again uh you know paypal venmo these are companies and and i i will trust more paypal and venmo and cash app than uh some uh crypto exchanges that that's for sure uh you know because they, they have some uh, most of them are public they have shareholders so uh before the before the you know, uh, but I, I'm not sure about the the requirements in regards of the reserve PayPal have to to keep 
uh, for the, the 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 funds of their customers. So you know, I maybe they're doing some uh, fractional reserves as well. So there's a danger here too, but I'm not sure. So, uh, but it's, it's a really great question. Sorry if I look at the at my right. I have two screens. So, uh, um, so Fox. Oh, so yeah, I, that's that's why I thought uh, Fox Raymond. Uh, I was pretty sure that actually Interpol like shield wasabi in some kind of sense saying that yeah we we can track this it's really hard uh so it's a good uh it's a it's a good thing uh, so pat uh, said again well vpn tor coin join won't help you if you bought bitcoin uh ml kyc the exchange well that's that's my my previous response kind of uh responded to that as well that if you it's it's much less there's a thing being identified on a singular platform uh on a singular platform such uh, as on an exchange that has like the responsibility of keeping your information and being identified on the whole network uh on the block on the blockchain basis because uh then there you have a surf like th you have a threat regarding uh your information that is being kept uh by in the internal servers of the company that you have kyc your information but then if your your addresses or your pub key has been identified and and people know that these addresses are yours and are visible to the entire world basically because everybody can look up the bitcoin blockchain i think there is a still uh uh it's still important to distinguish these two um and uh, so that's why I think I, I don't uh, I don't agree with the statement that VPN Tor and CoinJoin will help you, uh, because normally these companies uh, shouldn't shouldn't uh, publish that information without um, uh, and unless you're talking about uh, from a governmental point of view. Uh, so of course, if if you're getting audited, for example. Uh, for for uh, your revenue uh, for your bitcoins, uh, if there is some uh, s suspicious activity, financial activity coming from your part, um, depending on the jurisdiction, the the government or the revenue agency can ask uh, the exchange to provide some information in regards of a certain customer, and uh, and but they only can do that with a warrant and etc. Uh, so I think there's still a, a difference to be made. Um, so for Raymond said they can identify them but not track. The idea is QIC is good. Just hide your well. You know, if we really respect the Bitcoin ethos, I wouldn't say that. But I, 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 I know why Bitcoin uh, QIC is necessary for exchanges. Not be not only because of the loss, but because everybody trying to fraud you. Everybody, as soon as you have an exchange, everybody's gonna try. And uh, the only way you you're making sure that you won't get scammed yourself by having your platform is by identifying your customers. Um, and then and then you can construct your policies if you if you believe in Bitcoin privacy. Uh, for for example, as we do, uh, we want to make our system in a way where once the Bitcoin leave uh, our system, it's uh, after that it's 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 yours to be uh, manipulated the good way. So, but some companies, for example, won't have uh, good practices in regards of the how they use their addresses, etc. So, once the Bitcoins leave the platform, it's much more easier uh, to to associate a certain funds to uh, to your identity. So, there's that distinction to be made. Once the government knows that you have bought Bitcoin action in Canada, like bull Bitcoin, they don't have to track your transaction. There. Well, uh, I know I have been audited uh, um, in 2017, and because I'm a public figure, uh, well, public figure, uh, you know, I'm I'm uh, really vocal. For example, on the Facebook groups, uh, we organize meetups, etc. I, I do webinars, uh, so I knew I, I was gonna get audited at some point. And you know, 
they don't really understand how Bitcoin works yet. So for example, they're going to ask you, well, list me all your addresses uh, uh, that that you had at some point. Well, uh, you can say, well, I, I have uh, I have multiple uh, client instances and in each one of them, there's millions of addresses. Do you want each one of them? Do you want only the one that have been holding funds? Uh, but I agree with you. Uh, once you get audited, uh, if if you really use Bitcoin uh, as a way to launder money or to hide some funds, uh, they're gonna go after you, uh, uh, unfortunately. So uh, so that that's reality, and I agree with you. Uh, but you know, there's the question of being hidden from uh, the government, but there's also the question of uh, having privacy within uh, with your Bitcoin for your own security. Uh, for for other malicious, uh, uh, more malicious uh, actors such as hackers or or you know uh, people, uh, criminals. Um, so yeah, Dominique Lacroix, the Plex coin scammer. The Quebec judge gave him a trace. Give your private keys or stay in prison indefinitely for contempt of court. Um, uh, yeah, so the question is, how long are you willing to stay in prison to keep your Bitcoin? Uh, I, I like your reasoning, um, uh, Pat, and we can go really uh, deep down that rabbit hole. Uh, so basically, if, some, for example, Bitcoin is getting really popular and is becoming this new form of store, storing uh, your wealth and people use Bitcoin more and more uh, as, a, as a way to... to, to not even just hold wealth, but transact. And the Canadian government doesn't like the fact he's lo losing the monopoly on money. He can maybe start a war against Bitcoiners because Bitcoin may, might appreciate a lot in the future. And while we have all these laws where all the the, the, the people that bought some Bitcoin in Canada have already been, been identified, well, then, you know, Bitcoin is worth uh, half a million. Uh, for, for say, and uh, we want our peace, right? We want a peace. Uh, you got rich too quickly by doing nothing. Uh, we deserve. Uh, we deserve to collect. Uh, 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 we deserve to collect uh, uh, what what's due to us, right? By by right. But the thing is, well, most of the people will already declare. Uh, well, declare their their taxes, their capital gain taxes. Uh, according to the laws, because most of the people uh, respect the law uh, and are not criminals. So, so the question is, uh, uh, is that is that you know that that danger of being tracked down by the government if you take the choice of not declaring some stuff? Well, you already know it's uh, illegal, and if you did it in with other if you i'm not talking about you specifically but you know money laundry money laundering has is already illegal so no matter if you do it with uh, bitcoin or other kind of uh, uh, other schemes or other other methods uh, if the government goes after you they always have the the option to putting you in prison and well uh, just tell me what i uh, i want to know right so but i agree with you it's a, it's a great uh, subject but uh, that that's gonna be in a few years the, the war against uh, Bitcoiners. So be ready, Pat. <laughs> so if you bought if you bought one hundred k's of Bitcoin, Bull Bitcoin, the government asked them to provide their information transaction. The only thing they have to know is how much funding. Yeah, exactly. Uh, yeah, they don't need to analyze the blockchain. I agree with you. It's not a question of, um, it's not a question of the blockchain at that point. It's a question of uh, what what information because you have that uh, fiat on ramp, right? Uh, but I believe so that if there's a more like circular economy within the the, the Bitcoin uh, world, um, it's gonna be much more. Uh, it, it, there's not there's not gonna be the the, the only path of going through fiat in order to enter the Bitcoin world because some people in the future may accept Bitcoin as a payment or 
you're going to say, well, I'm going to pay uh, my employees in Bitcoin. So there's few ways in, in which we can mitigate the fact that uh, you're, uh, you're, uh, you're buying Bitcoin with fiat in the first place. What is the best way to buy Bitcoin in liquid cash if there's a crisis? Should one go through OTC or through uh, P2P routes? Uh, really great questions. There are some few exchanges uh, offering that service of P2P transactions. And you can also go to us, uh, but depending on where you live. Uh, but uh, the problem with um, doing OTC services, uh, not OTC services, doing transaction in li uh, in liquid cash, a lot of exchanges are not gonna like uh, are not gonna like that, and there's much much uh, less liquidity on, for example, decentralized exchanges, etc. But uh, if you have that problem at some point, uh, you you can call us. But uh, let me find just a. a I know I don't know if you know about Horol Horol. I'm gonna send you the link. So you have you have that platform. But you have Horol Horol. Uh but the thing is you have to trust individually. Uh, the one the the people uh, which uh, in which you're transaction with uh, transacting with right um so there's going to be much more or less liquidity it's it's most most often for small trades um and it, it's not that and uh yeah and uh, meaning verifiable bitcoin uh well you can do both um we're actually associated with bull bitcoin so uh, it doesn't really matter uh, but if you, uh, they don't take cash actually. Uh, so, so you, you could go to us, but yeah. And uh, Pat asked also privacy is a degree. You can reach a level of price, privacy. I agree. There are levels. So you don't have to be completely private from the beginning. Uh, you can start small and increase your privacy. Yeah, yeah. So it's all it's always a question of trade offs, right? You have a centralized exchange, KYC exchange. You're gonna have a lot of KYC, etc. But then uh, you lose your your privacy. Uh, but then you have P two P. But then it's much harder to find really uh, significant uh, liquidity, and you don't have the assurances of uh, you have to trust the other person. Uh, so. There's a, there's a, it's always a question. Life is a question of trade offs. So it's always like that. So, oh, yeah, I forgot about the Bitcoin, uh, the, the YouTube channel. Just quickly, I think we're going to finish up the presentation pretty soon. So you can subscribe to that. And if you have uh, some friends want, wanting to learn about Bitcoin, I, I did all the presentations uh, of the security month in uh, French are already for, uh, so for Francophones, uh, don't hesitate to send that to your uh, French friends uh, or Quebecer friends. And uh, so, yeah, that's it, I think. I don't know if there's a last question. Thank you, Pat. It's uh, nice seeing you uh, coming back. Uh, it's it's nice to have uh, having people coming back. Merci, merci, mademoiselle. Thank you. Thank you. Okay, so thank you. Thank you, everybody. Bye-bye. See you next time.